Today, let's talk about reading purposefully. Now, though I'm using reading as our key term, the same can also apply to watching purposefully, playing purposefully, listening purposefully, whether you're consuming books, YouTube videos, audiobooks, playing video games, watching movies, any of those things, if you would like them to impact your behavior for the better, if you'd like to learn from them, if there's practical tips contained within, if there's insights into your life that you'd like to be able to drop on later, I cannot stress enough the importance of keeping notes for a number of reasons, right? It's something that we've got to go through that process of internalizing it to ourselves in a way we make a highlight. We're not really internalizing. We might be engaged with it. We're not having to put it back into our own words like when we type or write a note. We're never having to pause it like we might if we're listening to an audiobook or watching a show or playing a game to jot our notes and thoughts down like we do if we're making a note. And then, of course, there's no way to review so easily highlights or other kind of notes as to if we've written notes, we can very easily and succinctly summarize going back through those, skim through those, remind ourselves of all the stuff oftentimes even that came between our notes because it kind of act as pillars as to what stood out to us, what jumped out as being different from how we were thinking about it, new to us. I know I've done a video about this sort of thing before. It's important enough, I think, to, to bang the drum on again especially with GDC now recently. So there's going to be new videos in the vault coming up, including free videos on YouTube and otherwise, where if the intent is to somehow have that not just entertain you for 15, 20, 30 minutes, but really to impact your work and change the future of what you do, then it's necessary to come out a little more critical, a little more like you were preparing to discuss it in a class. And that's precisely why when there's courses that are discussing readings, discussing movies and so on, in order to kind of participate in those discussions and dialogues constructively, you got to have made notes, brought notes with you. It's not just busy work. It's that that's how we can ingest that material into a format useful from us to be able to speak to, argue about. And it's not about agreeing with it. It's not about absorbing it 100%. It's not about taking it and putting it inside yourself exactly as a mirror or copy of what was said. But it's that to be able to have it as something in your tool belt, things to draw upon. Well, here's what that speaker said about that. Well, here's what that designer suggested. Here's what that writer suggested about it is useful, even if it's what we disagree with, because it allows us to borrow bits and pieces, adapt bits and pieces, compare and contrast to what we're doing, how it might be if it's different in approach, perhaps different for some other purpose. But to do that, we've got to do more than just passively absorb it. That going through audiobook after audiobook, and I think Audible is a great deal. I've got a subscription to Audible. I'm happy with it. I'm not shilling for it. There's no promotional links or whatever. But if you just pound through those books quickly without sort of making any notes and stuff, and again, it's different if you're listening to fiction for entertainment as opposed to if you're listening to fiction to inspire fiction you want to write, then just like when a game developer plays a game to inspire work they want to build, it's going to help to actually take some real notes on it. Or maybe more obviously, if you listen to nonfiction stuff, if you're reading nonfiction books, it's good to slow down. It's good to make some notes. You're not going to get through it as fast. But the point is not to get from one cover to the other. The point is not to race through it, to be on the other side of it, as if somehow in that process you've downloaded the software into your brain. The point is for you to come away from that experience different than you started it, equipped with more tools, ready with more examples, able to consider more perspectives, able to draw upon more ideas than what you had when you went into it. And that means going much slower through it, making some notes, that it's better to get through one book, audiobook, game, whatever, in the time you could potentially have got through five, six, or 10, if the difference is you actually got something usable out of it. Notes. I keep on track on Trello. It's of course where I keep a lot of my notes, kind of helps me organize or reference those. I keep different notes for different videos I'm watching, for different books I'm reading. For me, I find that very helpful to actually get something from it, in including there's cases where I first maybe sped through something to figure out, is this worth digging in deeper on? Does this justify the time it takes to really get notes on it? And occasionally the answer has been yes, in which case I go back through it. The second time through, taking notes on the parts that again stand out as different from what I've expected, things that I might strongly disagree with. It's so useful to pinpoint those, just like the video about what irritates us and others. Finding what in a writing jumps out to us is that's super not how I think about it can help shine a light on how we think about it. Create an opportunity for us to reflect on that as well. That's all for today. Just to make sure that if your intention is to 
learn something from material, to gain something from it, to better yourself through it. It helps to be keeping notes on it and not just passively absorbing it. But that's all for today.